Do you find it weird moving from not being aristocracy to being aristocracy? Obviously, you can stress yourself out with it if you want to. I feel like it's a transitional phase, so not all of it's going to go smoothly. Do I have to call you Lady Weymouth now? <laughs> I'll let you off. Change is coming to Longleat, the aristocratic house with lions in the backyard. This national treasure belongs to a lord like no other. Monogamy wasn't ever going to work for me. But he's handed control to his son and heir, Suolin. Sliding down these was a favourite as a kid. Who's moved back in with his new wife. Sort of a tingling feeling, because it doesn't really feel real. They're our nobility. They own this joint. They are of a, a standing and a breeding in society. Grand houses like this aren't easy to manage. Steady, steady, steady. Hundreds of people now depend on them. Many of you will notice a lot of changes this year. I wouldn't have said she only got off to the best start ever. And having two lords under one roof creates its own tensions. They live in separate parts of the house, so they do like to live reasonably separate lives. I try not to do anything to irritate them. Now they must try to make a home in this most extraordinary of houses. He's inherited a massive responsibility and a huge amount of history. We have to just not be scared to use it. There's no point having anything if you don't enjoy it. We haven't done this before. Sunday morning in June. Visitors make their way towards Longleat, one of the finest private estates in the country. The grounds are filled with wild animals from around the world. The house was built in 1580, and it's been owned by the same aristocratic family for 14 generations. online. Yeah, and your reference? The people ask about the, the Marcus Bar. Yeah, they do. Right. They say, is he in? And I say, yeah, you go down and put that tea there. That's in, in the front door. Is. Much of the house is now shared with the general public. Good morning. Good morning. But the Marquis of Bath himself is still very much in residence. He's on the top floor in a self-contained apartment with its own front door and a butler. Good morning, Lord Bar. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I am well. What have you been up to this morning? Um, just working through some of the things I can find on the desk. This desk is a bit of a bit of a challenge, is it not? The filing system is urgency there. Um, Long-term storage there, okay. or, or longer term. Right, OK. Lord Bath lives alone. He has an open marriage, and his wife, Lady Bath, divides her time between Longleat and a house in France. Trudy is a long-time wifelet, who visits Lord Bath when his wife's not there. You still enjoy the company of women? Yes, I do. Yes. As you'd expect, I'm not a, a discard on the shelf yet. At 82, Lord Bath is winding down his activities. He's handed the running of the estate to his son, Suolin. I'm really content to just all think I'm now in retirement. My hand is still on the tiller but only in a, a safety valve sort of way. Suolin lives on the floor below, in a separate flat of his own. Oh, hello. Good morning. Good morning. Carlos is the housekeeper. This flat is where Suolin grew up. Now it's home to him and his new wife, Emma. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Now in control, the couple can put their own stamp on the house. 
going forward, I want to do more events here. You know, we used to have concerts here. The Rolling Stones played here once. You know, we used to have um, a sort of last night of the proms thing here. And I'd like to do more charity events, more art events and concerts. I think that would be fun. Today, the couple are hosting a party for the Rainbow Trust, one of their charities, down in the public gardens. Ooh, sounds like they're having fun. I mean, you are sort of living within a tourist attraction. Right? Yeah, completely. Living in a theme park, <laughs> which is great. I mean, it's, it's like a dream, isn't it? Living with all these fun things to go and do right outside the door. Ready? Suolin is the heir to this £190 million pound estate. Hi there. Good morning. How are you? All right, how are you? Good, thanks. Nice to see you. Hi there, how are you? So, Sunday, shouldn't you be... Um... Watching telly. Asleep. Reading <laughs> the papers. Yeah. Well, we've done a bit of that. And um, now it's the Rainbow Trust event. They do early tours, don't they? I mean, people are literally passing by your front door, aren't they? I mean... mm. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> you get used yeah. to it. As well as the estate, Suolin inherits a title. He and Emma are Lord and Lady Weymouth. But they've asked their staff to drop the traditional formalities. Lord Bath is Lord Bath, so he's my Lord. How do you feel about that? I feel fine, absolutely fine. You like it? Um, yeah, I think so. I think it's all part of, it's all part of the house. Um, and it's um, obviously with the new generation, with um, Sjolin and Emma, they like to be called by their first names, and that equally is as comfortable to me. Um, in formal situations, I will use their titles. Jeff is the house steward, in charge of protecting the house and maintaining its contents. I'm just going to go into the private side now and um, just check the private side of the house. There's no, there's no one home anyway. Just to make sure everything's where it should be. He's a regular visitor to the family's private apartments. Lady Bath and Lord Bath. Lord Bath has made Longleat House quite unique for his colourful character and his lifestyle. Do you get to see him often? Yeah, I, I see him probably every day, every other day. Does he come down to supper? Sometimes he comes down, depending on who's home, he will come down for lunch and dinner, depending on who's home. D depending on who's home? Yes. What, what does that mean? Um, I can't possibly tell you. OK. Although Lord Bath's open about his wifelets, Jeff is used to being discreet. Sorry, is it, have I hit a problem? No, no, not at all. Um, I, just, I just can't discuss Lady Bath. And it's Lady Bath who will affect where he is. Every family has things that go on in their lives that they would like to keep private. So just being able to make a judgment call on, on things that do happen in the house from time to time and ensure that it's dealt with appropriately and discreetly and the people that need to know, know, and the people that don't need to know definitely don't find out. Early Monday morning and the residents of Longleat are already up. House steward Jeff is heading in from his cottage on the estate to open up for today's visitors. Morning. Are you okay? Suolin's now responsible for a workforce of more than 400 people. This 
house has been in my family now for nearly 400 years, then you do feel this responsibility on one uh, to keep it going, to preserve it. It was Suolin's grandfather who started the safari park. It was the only way he could afford the upkeep of the fragile old building and its priceless art. Although I'm a uh, fairly comfortably off in money ways, I would certainly not have had enough money to keep the house up. His lions became famous. And soon the park was paying for the house. But running the estate was a full-time occupation, which he hoped his descendants would carry on. You were close to your grandfather? Yeah, I used to, um, I used to work for him. Um, so uh, I think the, the rate of pay was £1.20 an hour. The, the one experience that really stands out, there was a tree that had ivy all over it, and my job was to, to get this ivy off the tree, and it was a day not too dissimilar to, to this one. It was a hot, sunny day, and for a period I was just pulling it with one arm, and he had been parked in his Subaru, Subaru just behind the, the church wall watching me, and uh, he, he crept up behind me. I had no idea he was there, and then said... Use both fucking hands, you lazy little. <laughs> I don't know if you can show this or not. <laughs> anyway, um, I learned never to be at risk of looking lazy in front of him again. <laughs> he wanted you to have a work ethic. Yeah, he wanted me to have a work ethic, absolutely. These days, there are many new animals. <laughs> But the famous lions remain a draw. And one of the most popular characters in the park dates back to Suolin's grandfather's time. Now, Nico's a Western Lowland silverback gorilla. He's a very special gorilla indeed. He's got an outdoor heated veranda, he's got a heat, fully heated house. At 53, Nico's believed to be the second oldest male gorilla in the world. Stay well for breakfast, lunch or dinner. He does like a mango fruit yogurt. Nico's been living on this island for 28 years. Animal keeper Mark has been looking after him for 24 of them. What does he enjoy in life? Eating. <laughs> Eating and sleeping. That is Nico's role in life. That's, that, that's what keeps him happy these days. There are detractors to the idea of an island. I um, mean, obviously surrounded by water. Gorillas aren't, aren't good with water. But the other side is it's, it's, it's isolated, it's peaceful, it's quiet. Um, you know, and gorillas are quite peaceful, gentle, quiet and shy animals. So it's quite nice that they're out here and they don't get hassled 24-7. Nico's been on his own since his companion died. So he's been on his own for seven years now. Um, and this is what would happen to him anyway, even if he were in the wild. He would have long since been deposed by a younger male. This is actually normal. That he, he in effect, hands over power to a younger, the younger generation. That's right, yeah. It's what's happening in the house, isn't it? <laughs> kind of, yeah, I suppose so, yes. It is what's happening with the family, yeah. At the side of the house, there's one private garden where the public aren't allowed. Wow, so sunny. Bring my sunglasses. <laughs> she probably won't bring it back to me. Monkey! Emma is the daughter of a Nigerian oil tycoon and an English mum. <laughs> she met Suolin through a distant family connection. How well do you know the house now? 
Pretty well. I mean, there's a few doors that are a mystery still. There was one that I found yesterday that's locked, so I might ask somebody to open it just just for the sake of it. How many rooms there are? Are there a few hundred rooms? It is massive. <laughs> it's enormous. I remember coming for the first time with Sulin when we started to go seeing each other, which was a strange feeling. You know, it was kind of exciting to come down. Um, I remember driving down the hill with him the first time, and you feel like a, your tummy flips a bit. <laughs> My lords, ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand for Lord and Lady Weymouth. <laughs> Their wedding was held at Longleat. I think it's just exactly how you dream of it in a fairy tale book, how you'd want to get married. There were over 400 guests. Emma's parents aren't together, but they were both there. It was the biggest party the house had seen in over 100 years. I was really lucky. I am aware I'm quite lucky. It was just the happiest time ever. You're, I mean, it's like, I mean, you are the lady of the house. Mm. Scary? Yeah, probably. Shh. Scary because, um, everybody's watching. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do anything completely in private, really. So I guess that's quite daunting. Glasses. <laughs> How funny glasses. Emma and Suelin have two housekeepers, a married couple, Bella and Carlos. Do you see yourself as a, a servant, a modern day servant? Yes, yes. We have, I, I, I don't have any complexes about that, and I think Bella doesn't have it too. It's, it's, it's our work, it's a job, and someone has got to do it, and we're paid to do it, and uh, no problem whatsoever. Do you consider yourself a servant? Uh, I know I am, but I don't think like that. They are not different from us. Well, they are not uh, royal, <laughs> like we see on the, the movies, the, everybody with, uh, like, <laughs> no. It's slightly ironic, isn't it? It's a big house. They don't, they don't have a lot of rooms here, do they? No, because as the house is open to the public and they want to preserve as it once was, a lot of it is, is off limits, let's say. It's for her. Up. <laughs> they are too compressed. They, are, they need space. They don't have a lot of room. No. Well, the, 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 the rooms are, are big, but they don't have a, a space for storage. Or, but we hope soon we'll have. <laughs> um, yeah, that's... He doesn't have anywhere to put his shirts. No. <laughs> Lack of wardrobe space was actually the least of Suelin's problems when he moved back in. Whilst the public areas are largely unchanged from the distant past, Lord Bath used to live in the apartment the couple now share and spent decades painting vast flamboyant murals on every wall. his art to be preserved for future generations and he opened the rooms to the public despite some of it being a bit x-rated there'll probably be a feeling that the figures are grotesque say to the full crowd you're taking round, if you're likely to be offended uh, please wait in the passage out here and then if somebody starts making a fuss well to hell and do uh, we give them their money back oh them? no 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 the new public tours through the family's apartment didn't go down well with his then teenage son. 
Well, it was fine until Dad opened the private apartments up yeah. to, open to the public. I mean, I, I understand that Dad wants his murals to be seen by the public, and anybody that's invested that much time into something of this mm -hmm. magnitude would want it to be seen. So but whenever I walk from one part of the house to the other, I bump into tools. Well, I mean, you've got to get used to that. Well, no, I, I don't <laughs> think I should have to get used to that. You're in danger of getting yourself seen as an arrogant departure from no, the I don't idea think, of No, I don't think I'm being arrogant. I just think I just want a You're home to be a home. Of... So this is probably the most famous of my father's murals. Um, I think the, the, reasons are, the reasons why are obvious. I mean, it is, it is quite dark, isn't it? It's very dark, and it smells quite strong. <coughs> Strongly still. The oil smell never went away. Uh, if it's not a silly question, I mean, wh wh why, did he, why did he create this? I mean... Um, well, I mean, as an artist, it's, it's a subject of interest. Um, Do you ever use this room? Yeah, we use guest. it as a guest yeah. room. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Who, who and to would make stay it... in here? Who? Who would want to stay in here? People find it quite fun. Yeah, people, you know, and, and when it's anybody's first time, they always get put in the Kama Sutra room. Yeah, it's always so, fun to decide who yeah. gets this room. When Solin moved back home, he decided to remove some of his father's treasured murals and redecorate. There was a, a, a moment when I realised that I couldn't be looking at the same walls pushing 40 as I was looking at when I was four. And so this room was uh, a nighttime fantasy. So it was very, I mean, the colours were very, very dark. Lord Bath only found out after the murals were gone. The consequence was that obviously it caused a, a major rift between my father and me. Lord Bath broke off all contact with the couple. He even boycotted their wedding despite it being downstairs. In some ways, it's his, it's his life's work. Yeah, and, uh, you know, he, he was and, and remains uh, uh, genuinely hurt. Lord Bath's extraordinary lifestyle was a source of tension with his own father as well. The eldest son, particularly, never gets on with the father. I mean, that's a sort of adage almost amongst the aristocracy. I don't know why, why it should be, I cannot think. But um, one doesn't see eye to eye with them at all, no. The covenants of Longleat mean the eldest son automatically inherits it, no matter what they do. But whilst Lord Bath is alive, he could ask Suelin to leave at any time. Outside of my apartments, which are arguably under a different domain for a number of reasons, which I, I won't go into. But outside of my apartments, I try not to do anything to irritate him. <laughs> Good night, guys. Good night. <laughs> The tensions in the family are something the staff work around. You've got two lords and two separate yes. households yes. to navigate here. Yes. They live in separate parts of the house, so they do like to live reasonably separate lives. And that, that doesn't make it any more difficult. It just means you just have to be switched on a little bit more and, and just be wary of who's home, I think, is, is, the, is the way I can put that. surrounded by a fence that's three miles long. Every morning, someone has to drive round it to check nothing's escaped in the night. Five, 
Seen all the wolves. You have to be a, a relatively obsessive about this sort of stuff. Completely obsessive. It, it's just the safety in here is absolutely paramount. The greatest fear is a fallen branch offering a ladder over the fence. Every fence is checked. It's, it's one of those things that's quite a mundane task and you can easily fall into the trap of just whizzing round here and it's all right, it's normally okay. You can't do that. Something could have come down across one of the cat houses um, and you could have a lion potentially where it shouldn't be. Safari section leader Andy has worked here 28 years. Longley is a um, very odd place. It kind of gets under your skin and it's like one of those bizarre relationships. I mean, eccentric place. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's an eccentric place full of eccentrics. But nowhere, nowhere is even remotely like this place. I think you've obviously got, you've got Henry who was who was a proper aristocrat. He was proper English aristocracy. Then the present Lord Bath, who, well, I mean, that man just speaks for himself. He's just an incredible, incredible man. They smashed the mould when he was made. There is only one of that man. You know, so it's probably going to be very difficult for Seawallin to, to follow those guys, you know? Henry, Henry and his father, his grandfather and his father. What a pair of guys, you know? And Seawallin, he's, he's got a couple of very flamboyant people to follow. Today, another of Lord Bath's lady friends is visiting. Silvana was a Bond girl when Lord Bath met her. Take a woman like Silvana, for example. She's a model and an actress. She's independent. In many ways, she's just the person I might be looking for. They've stayed friends for over 50 years. And I love, I love a bottle of wine. Yes. Can I open this now? As you like. <laughs> Lovely. I should yes. go. I should go to prepare this for you. Right. Glasses is all we're missing. I've got a glass. Do you remember this for? I can frame it and give it to you. You put it on the wall. I must choose when what I put up on the wall. You, oh, you will see it. So. Excuse me. Mm hmm. Yes, I have places for you and yes. places not for you. <laughs> so where is my place on? Now don't bully me on camera. <laughs> I don't, darling. I never do. I've got to be camera sticking up do. for myself. I never do. <laughs> I never do, darling. <laughs> <laughs> don't be unkind. <laughs> I shall go and, and prepare. OK, love. Lord Bath once wrote a song about Silvana. Hello there, you mulberry-coloured Venus. I've been following around London for a while You shouldn't let my whiteness come between us So show to me how radiant you smile How did you coin the term wifelets, Lord Bar? Yes. These girlfriends sometimes expected to be called a little more than a girlfriend um, and it would be wrong to say they were wives so um, wifelet became the term. Mm. Little wives. Little wives. Mm. Little wives. Little wives, yes. yes. I'll garland her with necklaces and flowers and I'll shield her from the attitudes of hate. <laughs> okay. Okay, darling. Mm. 
Lord Bath immortalised 73 of his wifelets on a spiral staircase in the house. They're numbered, in the order he met them. Can you see the likeness? <laughs> would you... Is this the sort of man that you would have married? I mean, would you have liked to have married? <sighs> That's a question to answer. It's quite a... Even if one would have fantasising that sort of, you know, I don't think it would be acceptable. <laughs> to him? <laughs> to him it would have been more than acceptable, but for others I don't think they would accept it at all. Don't forget, you know, being a chocolate lady coming into a family like this would never be accepted, really. Not then. One year after her own marriage into the family, Emma's got some exciting news. I like that I can feel it move now. I can sometimes see it when it's kicking, you know? I can see my tummy moving. It's such a massive thing, such an emotional and, like, huge thing to be pregnant. So I'm very excited. And they're empty. Toys. Board games. So that's good. Baby clothes in there. It's handy. You know the sex of the baby? Yes. It's a boy. A boy means a definite heir. Girls only inherit Longleat if no brothers are available. I haven't told the press, but I've, I know. I know it's a boy. <laughs> Why haven't you told the press? Um, just, just it makes it more stressful, more pressure. I just thought, you know... I'm pregnant, that's enough news for now. <laughs> you can know what it is later when it's born. And well, because it's an heir. Yeah, I guess boy. so. Less questions to answer. Is there a sense that you were always expected to have, have a child and an heir? I mean, I guess so, but that's just. I mean, that goes without saying. When you get married, you want to have children and a happy family life. And then obviously. There is, I mean, obviously, Siola needs to have a child and he'll take over. Ideally, that's what you would want, to keep it going in the same direction. There was always that expectation. I suppose so, but no-one sat me down and gave me a lecture about it. <laughs> I wasn't, like, instructed in any way. Longleat House is the main family asset. But it also includes Horningsham, an entire village contained on the estate. There's the primary school, where Lord Bath sent Suolin. A pub, which Longleat owns and runs, and over 300 residents. Their cottages are almost all owned by the estate. Residents can't buy their properties, they rent them, often for a lifetime. It's quite an unusual way to live in some ways, isn't it? That you're the tenants and there's the lord in the manor. Do you, do you mind that? Not a bit. No, I like it. <laughs> I like it. I do. I, I, I watch that Abbey and I think, yeah, I love it. <laughs> it's England, isn't it, really? What do you mean? Uh, well, it's always been lords and serfs. Vera's family have rented this cottage for three generations. Her mother was a maid at Longleat. So have you ever lived anywhere else? No. <laughs> no, I wouldn't want to, would I? Would you want to live anywhere else if you could live in Horningsham? But since Suolin took over, there's been unrest in the village. Come on, you two. Come on. Vera's son, Steve, rents a farm from the estate. There you go. I wouldn't have said she only got off to the best start ever. Um, the security that we all felt with our tenancies 
that evaporated because nobody knew what the hell was going to happen next. Under previous lords, rents in the village had always been subsidised. But now they've been set to more commercial levels. You know, it was quite a, 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 a wake-up call to a lot of us. You know, um, the rents now are getting to the point where people can't afford to stay in the village. People have moved away? Uh, people have moved away. Therefore, you lose the heart of the village. He's got to bring back trust and stability in the management that Longleat has got now. This evening, the villagers are awaiting a visit from Longleat management. To improve relations with the village, Suolin's changed the team looking after them. Michael is the new liaison, but he won't be offering discounted rents. We, we have got to try and make sure that the rents and estate properties reflect the market. Tonight's his first official meeting with the villagers. So, uh, yeah, settling, settling in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, you come into the estate where the estate is in a position of rebuilding trust within the community. <clears throat> One of the problems we had with the last regime was communication. Mm -hmm. We, it was non-existent, mm -hmm. completely non-existent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Communication. Now, given that Longley owns virtually everything in the village, Parish Council's very keen to uh, explore the possibility of having some affordable housing in the village. Yep. Rental value in the, in the village now is beyond the pay structure that a lot of people are working on at mm -hmm. Longley. Mm -hmm. uh, rental values, um, yeah, I've heard uh, I've heard lots of different ways about how things have been done in the past. One thing I'm very clear on is that I want to try and now move forward. Yeah. And that's not going to happen overnight. Um, and I'm, I'm a realist, so I won't, I won't pretend otherwise. Um, because it takes money. Well, it takes time and money. will mm -hmm. and, and the finances. Yeah, we're, we are running a commercial business. That, that's, 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 that's evident, so we have those commercial objectives which we've got to always bear in mind, of course. Um, but at the same time we want to try and work with the community. I suppose people are more business savvy now, and, and it's a hard, you know, being in business you've got to be hard nosed, you've got to make decisions that are going to upset people. As long as people can rely on the system that he puts in place to be fair and to listen and to act properly, um, then I can't really see he, he'll, he'll, he'll be a good landlord. Is it it's not drying or is it not turning or sometimes I'm not good and uh I'll get them out again for you. Okay. you. I'll add it to the list. Thank you, Carlos. <laughs> Suelin and Emma have spent the last few months trying to heal the rift with his father over the murals. Things a bit better between you? Yeah, much. Yeah, definitely. We're, we're speaking. <laughs> you crossed the bridge with him. Yes, definitely. We had dinner with him on Wednesday this week, and it was great, really friendly and happy, so... It takes time. Mm. Mm. But it's much better that there's no odd feelings between us. You know, if he, even though if you, you can be here and not see anybody else if you don't want to. He lives in his bit, we live in our bit. It's not, our paths wouldn't cross, you know, so it's, it's just you know, the feeling. You want there not to be any feeling of distance if you don't have to have it. So it's easy, it's just better for everybody, better for the people who work here and better for us. 
Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. As a gesture of goodwill to his father, Suolin has requested staff put back one of the murals he took down. How long do you reckon it's going to take you to do? Well, that's really hard to say. Okay. They found a spare corridor for it, but moving it caused damage that now needs repairing. Oh, heck, it's quite a bit to do. So, what's happened here? What has happened here? This doesn't fit here. These are nice patches to start out with. Here is one. This, this needs some of that stuff. Here we need a piece, a piece of wood in there. Amateur artist and Longleat tour guide Jan will be restoring the mural. These, 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 are the pet these are the first patches that I'm going to try to work on. And this one, so then I have got a little bit of filling up to do. Okay. But I'm not sure whether I have to use the original material under here. I just think I can just as well use some sort of a filler and then for the rest this is all paint, this is all oil paint. Okay. It's exciting. It is. Very. Didn't think you'd be doing this when you came for a job as a guide at Longleat House. Since taking over, Suolin and Emma have tried to make more use of rooms that used to lie dormant. Hello there. How are you? Good. Good. This evening they're having friends to stay and dinner will be served in the Green Library. When we're entertaining, this is generally where we would have, have dinner. You want to use the house? Absolutely, absolutely. This room wasn't used for, for private use at all, so it's um, just another example of um, you know, letting the house live. Parties were never encouraged in this room because the antique books should ideally be kept in museum conditions. Even though it's a no, non-smoking room, I let people smoke. Um, not now that Emma's pregnant, obviously, but, but, but normally. Um, you know, a bit of cigarette smoke a few days a year isn't going to change anything that much. Um, and, you know, I think it's more important that the, the house lives and the rooms live than we maximize you know every single possible year that you can you can stretch out of, of the useful life of, of something otherwise um, what's the point what's the it? point what's the point Anna Meta, champagne or white wine the guests tonight include Sulin's bank manager the head of a libel law firm and Lord Dalmini the chairman of Sotheby's Friends Peter and Anna have flown in from Copenhagen and been given the Kama Sutra guest room. <laughs> look at the decor. <laughs> wow, well, wait, look at that. Telling you, Kama Sutra. Anyway, thank you, Peter. That's good. <laughs> Crazy. What do you think? Um, yeah, Very well, different. wonderful for two nights. <laughs> Whenever the family entertain in the historic parts of the house, Jeff, the house steward, is on hand. Part of his role is to ensure that everything runs smoothly. <laughs> Sorry, can I just check? Yeah, we're missing Mrs. Stanley. Oh, yes, Mrs. Stanley can't come. Okay, can you give me two minutes just to take a seat? Yeah, of course, of course. Richard, why why don't you take this seat here? And we're removing one seat. Jeff's also there to keep tabs on proceedings and check that nothing of historic value is mistreated. So Sjordian and Emma fully understand and respect the collection. They fully understand um, what I would call their responsibility to the house. I enjoy protecting the family. I enjoy seeing them enjoy their, the house. I also get an awful lot of pleasure out of just protecting the house and walking away each day knowing that I've done the best I can to ensure that this house is going to be here for the next year, the next 10 years, the next 100 years.
first time mural restorer Jan is painting the final touches. Are you anxious about doing it? I was much more when I got the job than now. Three patches here that I've done already and I'm quite happy with the result. There's a rectangular here. And there's a diamond shape here. And there's the same diamond shape here. When Lord Bath created these murals, his public opposition to traditional family morality caused controversy. On my own life, I suppose I'm, I'm feeling that monogamy wasn't ever going to work for me. His open marriage and wifelets seemed shocking, coming from a peer of the realm who sat in the House of Lords. He hadn't wanted to marry at all, but the Longleat Covenant required it. I would have loved to have had a hundred children, and I have always felt that Longleat would uh, be delightful with the, the, the patter of little feet up and down those staircases, yes. But Longleat, which I love, could not go to any illegitimate child of mine. Perhaps surprisingly, he only fathered three children, two with his wife. But Suolin grew up among his father's many wifelets. His mother was often in France. This is the disco room. There used to be a trampoline here. This was always here. And, uh... Your playroom? Yeah, yeah, it was. So, yeah, bouncing up and down on the trampoline there. A uh, happy childhood? Yeah. Um, yeah, happy bits, not such happy bits, but, um... Hmm, it was what it was. <laughs> did you feel privileged? I mean, did you feel lucky? Did you feel lucky as a child? No, I think as a child, I would definitely have preferred to live in a cottage in the village like most of my friends did. That, you know, I didn't really understand um, uh, what the privilege was as a, as a child. So now, as a, as a child, a child child, um, I quite liked the setup of um, two up, two down. <laughs> I mean, two up, two down. Ordinary parents. Yeah, it would have been a very different life. Today, the village tenants are having their annual fair. I would say this is one of the most important days in our, in our village life. A lot of hard work, a lot of hard work, but that's wood. Uh, we're not far away, we're what, an hour and a half, two hours away from opening and it's all looking very, very good. We live in the village that was created by Longleat. Lord Bath is our lord and we had to, you know, be polite and nice to them. Traditionally, Lord Bath opens the fair. But this year, for the first time, Suolin is taking over the role. It will be his first public appearance in the village since he put up the rents. Emma's been baking an offering for the cake stall. A Victoria sponge, yes, with berries, strawberries. And we've got to whip some cream. Yeah, absolutely. Have you got your speech ready? Ah, no. You've just reminded me. Um, <laughs> I, I understand that the organiser sent you a few, a few suggestions. He has. Well, he's actually very helpful. He sent me a, uh, a list of people who need to be 
thanked, which is on this piece of paper here. So I'm going to go and deal with that, and I'll be, uh, be back in a few minutes. What's the image you want to give to the villagers today? today? Yeah. Um, I just want them to like us, obviously. I think it's important that we have a good relationship with the village. I'm glad that we're doing this. I think it's good for them to see Seolun making a speech and being responsible and, you know, saying, welcoming them officially. <laughs> There are a few people that won't come to the fair because Stalin is going to be there and they just feel it's their way of saying, you know, I, you know, you, you mess things up, mate. You know, we're not coming because of it. It's only a small village, but this, this is quite a significant little moment for you two, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. Absolutely. After a period where relations with uh, the local community were not as good as they could have been. Um, it's an opportunity to uh, to re-engage and, and, and build bridges. Morning. How are you? Hi, thank you. Hi there. And then across to the right. Okay. Lovely. Thanks. <laughs> nice to see you. Hope you're doing the job that your dad. <laughs> Absolutely. Happy to be here. <laughs> very, very soon. Absolutely. See you in a minute. Yeah. Take care. Michael. Over to the right. Yeah. yeah down across to the right. Okey doke. <laughs> Where is the cake stand? Fantastic cake! Ta da! <laughs> your own creation. Yeah, I did, I made it. Fun. Oh, getting it here was a bit. I was going to say, no wonder you're carrying it personally. <laughs> the raspberry's my favourite. Oh, good. Well, I'll leave it here and then. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm very happy to be here at the uh, 2014 Horningsham Village Fair. Um, it's important to know that all of the money that you spend here is going to very good village causes, including the school, the church, the chapel, and the village hall. So please spend liberally. Uh, the fair is open. Thank you. It's officially open, so off you go and enjoy yourselves. And if you can't enjoy yourselves today, you're going to have a bad time. Feeling and Emma are very important to the whole village, you know, and it's, it's nice to know that they're going to be more involved, hopefully, with the village and, in, 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 if you like, lead from the front, you know. Hello. After the unrest that we've had, we have lost a lot of old, original, established people from the village, but then times change and things move on they can look at the village as the old Lord Baz did, looked at the village as part of their family, just an extended family. And that's how we, certainly as a village, would like to, to be seen and to be thought of by, by Seelan and Emma. Two hours later, Lord Bath arrives. We're going to the bar. With him is Trudy. Can we make a make a make way? Would you could you make room for the Marquis of Bath? Enormously helpful if you were. <laughs> well, happy days. <laughs> It's the first time Suolin and his father have been seen in public together since the mural dispute. Hello. Hi again, how are you? thanks. Hello. Hi there. Hi. 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 Years ago, I was in your 21st. Were you? Okay. With Cinderella in the big white dress. Oh, yes. Like now I now I know. Though. Right. Okay. Good. Good to see you. I've got to my ears. Right. 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 The villagers take a close interest in the family dynamics. 
sons always disagree on how father used to run the things. The father says, you can't run this. This isn't how I used to do it. And the son says, well, this is what we're doing now, father. This is my time now. Oh, my God. How are you? Hello, hi. Nice to see yeah. you. Nice to see you. And you brought the son. Good for you. Well, thanks. Good to see you. Yes, Caroline Ellsby. I do remember you. Absolutely. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah. How's life? Ah, I think we're done. Bye, see you soon. Bye. See you tomorrow. See you, Bye. Suerlin and Emma leave Lord Bath to enjoy himself. Lord Bath is just a huge personality in the area. He's a huge attraction, just on his own. You know, I think if we just sat Lord Bath in the middle of the field, we could have a fair just with him here. People would come and see him because he's, you know, he's a colourful character in many respects. Come on, then. Oh. Seal is a different, different uh, person altogether. You know, he's, he's just a normal chap who happens to look after a very nice estate. But uh, hopefully the estate will move on in a positive manner. These people make their own rules. They've got their own house, they've got their own money, they've got their own way of doing life. It's one of Hitler's watercolours. Look, I, I don't really understand what the Hitler thing was about. Longmeat isn't just a place of work, it's become my world. A woman's been flown to hospital after part of the miniature train at Longleat Safari Park overturned. My doctor says I'm suffering from grief since she married Sue Wollum.